The next item of business is topical questions, and at question number one, I call Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what it can do to increase the resilience of Scotland's 999 emergency telephone service in light of UKY technical issues over the weekend that rendered the service unusable for many users. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constant. Presiding Officer, the 999 call platform is a UK-wide system operated by BT and an integral part of the UK telecoms network. All telecoms infrastructure is reserved to and the responsibility of the UK Government. Scotland was not disproportionately affected by the issue. Police Scotland, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and the Scottish Ambulance Service promptly implemented business continuity arrangements which helped manage call handling and reduce the likelihood of substantial call queue build-up or excessive wait times for callers. Due to the scale of the incident, the Scottish Government Resilience Room was activated for the duration of the incident. We have made clear our concerns about this incident to BT and await the outcome of the formal inquiry initiated by Ofcom on the 26th of June. This should allow us to better understand the cause of the failure, the full impacts and any lessons that may be learned. Jamie Green. Uh, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that very helpful update uh, and also add my thanks to uh, those call handlers and emergency service workers who responded so quickly to events. Um, on the issue of uh, the outage itself and resilience, can I ask if the Cabinet Secretary had any direct conversations with BT or Police Scotland over the last 48 hours with regards and perhaps any initial thoughts as to what could have been a potential cause, although I do understand there will be a full-scale inquiry into that for obvious reasons. Uh, what we did see, presiding officer, uh, as a result of the 999 outage was the 101 service really step up uh, to take and respond to emergency calls, which is a relief because the Criminal Justice Committee just nine months ago took evidence from Deputy Chief Officer Page from Police Scotland who said that the very service itself was under existential threat and thankfully the government responded to that warning. Given the importance of the 101 service, can the Cabinet Secretary commit to ongoing investment in it and that it will continue to exist in its current form? Cabinet Secretary. President officer, let me start by reassuring uh, Mr Green that throughout the course of Sunday I had several conversations uh, throughout the course of the day uh, with my resilience officials who were also taking part in the UK COBRA meetings to relay any concerns that we had in Scotland. Uh, and since then, yesterday, uh, by chance, uh, there was indeed a Four Nations uh, where all ministers were present uh, with regards to resilience. And there certainly is a shared uh, understanding and a, a shared support uh, for the BT uh, inquiry from Ofcom in this matter. Um, in terms of some of the more specifics around this UK-wide outage, um, could I draw to Mr Green's attention a statement made uh, by BT uh, that says that they are nearing the end of a full internal investigation and expect to share the findings uh, with government emergency services and Ofcom by Thursday. Uh, this um, internal review will examine the technical aspects of what triggered Sunday's incident, the process of moving over uh, to the backup system and the timings of communications to emergency services, Ofcom and government. And in the interest of transparency, BT will share key findings publicly uh, at the same time, subject to the removal of any information that may remain confidential for critical uh, national infrastructure um, purposes. Now, in terms of the 101 service, I am glad uh, that Mr Green uh, acknowledges the improvements in that service, and that would certainly coincide with the views of His, His Majesty's Inspectorate uh, of Constabulary, and the Scottish Government will continue uh, to ensure that the 101 service as operated by Police Scotland and scrutinised by the SPA that those arrangements work well. Jamie Green. Uh, can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that further update and also to BT for uh, the information that they provided which is now a matter of public record uh, from the Cabinet Secretary. I don't think we can really underestimate the importance of our 999 and 101 services and the ability for the public to have full confidence in them and to get through when needed. 
Um, the reality, though, is, is that that trust has been eroded in many circumstances. Over the last five years, nearly two million calls to 101 had actually been abandoned by the caller, and waiting times for both 999 and 101 calls has risen significantly. The longest wait last month for a 101 call to be answered was one hour and two minutes. If you couple that on top of the recent scandal, which was very unfortunate, where we discovered that uh, calls had been allocated uh, fake uh, call signs and had not been responded to at all, we all know the tragic consequences as a parliament of what happens when call handling goes wrong. Uh, I guess what I'm looking for is some reassurances uh, to the public that they can have full confidence that all of our blue light services will be there for, for them when they are needed and that there is robust infrastructure in place to deal with both from a technical and resource point of view to deal with those emergency calls. Cabinet Secretary. Poseidon officer, what is clear from Sunday's unfortunate events is that the Scottish Government's resilience arrangements work well and the continuity business plans of all our emergency services work well um, and they of course deserve our, our grateful thanks uh, for that. In terms of the more specifics in and around Police Scotland call handling separate to this UK-wide um, uh, national outage uh, that, that BT has now been in investigated for, um, we of course continue to be hugely grateful to Police Scotland and their staff. It is worth remembering that Police Scotland receive more than 2 million calls each year and they continue to prioritise those 999 calls. The most recent figures show, and that's April um, of this year, that Police Scotland has an average answer time of six seconds for 99 calls, and that is in line with other large forces uh, across the UK. And in this year, up to the end of March, the average time to answer a non-emergency 101 call uh, was four minutes, 27 seconds. And as I mentioned in my previous answer, presiding officer, the SPA closely monitors uh, Police Scotland's approach. Uh, and that there have also been a number of improvements made. Police Scotland have highlighted uh, a number of actions on public engagement system improvement and staff support been taken uh, forward to further strengthen uh, performance but it is of course a matter that we will all continue to be vigilant on and it is a matter that has not helped with the increased police funding year on year since 2016-17 and of course we have the assurance uh, from the HMICS uh, assurance review into the services contact assessment uh, model also uh, which has highlighted a number of successes in this area. Thank you. I would be grateful for concise questions and responses, and I call Emma Harper. Thank you, President Officer. The downing of the phone line is, of course, a huge concern, and I welcome the measures that the Cabinet Secretary has outlined to ensure that in an emergency access to care is always available. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what additional steps are being taken to raise awareness amongst the public of other means of accessing medical attention in a non-emergency or non-urgent situation? Cabinet Secretary. Sidon officer, NHS 24 has completely transformed over the past three years from a predominantly out-of-hours primary care service to a 24-7 system-wide service providing triage to patients requiring both acute or primary care intervention and ensuring they are signposted to the appropriate service. Public messaging regarding NHS 24 services runs on social media along with communication campaigns on television, radio and digital platforms to promote NHS 424 services in the run-up, in particular to busy periods like bank holidays and there is also the um, NHS Inform website and the NHS 24 online app. Question number two, Paul O'Kane. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the reported delays in processing time for adults' disability payments. Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. We know 53% of adult disability payment decisions were made in less than four months, um, but we also know that many others are waiting too long. And Social Security Scotland is taking urgent action and concerted action to speed this up. The focus is on getting the decision right first time, and statistics show that this is working with only 6% of people asking for a redetermination. People can also be assured that Social Security Scotland will backdate all payments to the date of application and that they will continue to deliver this benefit in a different way, supporting people to apply and collecting information on their behalf. Under the previous system, people had to do this themselves before applying. 
Paul Keane. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Presiding officer, things are getting worse, not better. The average waits in Scotland for processing adult disability payment applications have more than doubled between September 2022 and April 2023, with people waiting on average 19 weeks for a decision, more than double the average of the waiting time that people in England and Wales wait uh, for personal independence payment through the DWP. That is an unacceptable position. And we don't even have a full picture of the longest waits. Uh, and many members around the chamber will have mailbags telling us the stories of inordinate waits that people are experiencing. Um, we need the granular data, presiding officer, to be able to show the full picture of the situation in Scotland. So will the Cabinet Secretary agree to publish full data so that we understand the scale of the problem and indeed so we can measure her responses by it? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, recent statistics have uh, just uh, not long been published, presiding officer, which looks at um, the adult disability processing times. Uh, but can I urge uh, some caution about a comparison uh, to PIP and personal independence payment, because they are very different application processes. And I made reference to some of these points in my original uh, remarks. Uh, first of all is the obligation uh, for Social Security Scotland to work very hard to make sure they're getting the right decision first time. That is showing that only 6% of people are going for redeterminations. Whereas PIP, for example, there were 25% going to mandatory reconsiderations and many, of course, going to appeal. There are, of course, some people who are uh, not able to just go through that uh, quite um, um, oppressive system. So uh, can I urge caution on that point because many of the PIP uh, decisions uh, clearly are then overturned under reconsideration or appeal. And can I also point uh, to the fact around the supporting information because that is a very, very important difference uh, within the system. Under PIP, the, the uh, client or customer, as a DWP like to call people, um, had to collect that supporting information themselves. Uh, people told us as we developed the agency and its processes that this was a very, very burdensome um, and onerous task. And that is why it is up to, uh, it is now the responsibility of the agency to gather that supporting information. Now, sometimes that does take time, uh, but I think it is important. And I hope Paul O'Kane is not suggesting that we change this and put that burden back on the client, as in PIP, uh, that the Social Security Scotland will endeavour to do this as quickly as possible. That's why they're taking concerted action to speed things up. But they will endeavour to uh, get that supporting information themselves rather than it going through the client. Oh, okay. uh, the Cabinet Secretary speaks about concerted action in order to speed things up, and absolutely I think it's clear that that is what we now must see. In recent months, there's been a whole range of issues exposed relating to the ability of Social Security Scotland to deliver on its core functions. The soaring cost of the IT budget, people waiting an, over an hour to have their call answered, being cut off on the phone and being unable to access the website. So the reality is we were promised a better, fairer Social Security system by this government through the creation of Social Security Scotland five years ago, but people are still in real need and should not be having to wait so long. So will the Cabinet Secretary outline for the Chamber what direct action she is going to take to get a grip of this problem, to bring these waiting times down, and will she commit to bring forward a clear plan to this Chamber in order to ensure that those processing times are sped up? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, can I, I give one example of uh, the cost of the IT budget uh, has increased because, of course, uh, when you compare that to our initial estimates, um, we were not at that time planning to deliver the Scottish child payment. And, of course, the IT system has been delivered to ensure that that uh, payment is now uh, gaining um, traction um, right across the country and making a real difference um, to people's uh, lives. Uh, I've uh, been in the chamber uh, on a number of occasions uh, recently, presiding officer, talking through uh, some of the, the points um, of change that are already being undertaken by the agency. So there are there is a review, uh, an end-to-end -end process review, and um, there are some procedures that have already put in place. I think, again, I've spoken in the Chamber already about changes that have already been made to the application process. Um, I've talked already in the Chamber about the fact that the agency is drawing more on the expertise of in-house health and social care practitioners to support case discussions earlier, therefore allowing uh, people to have their decisions made earlier. And a number of changes have also been made to the way in which the agency handles calls, uh, staff who can be deployed else from elsewhere in the organisation 
to help reduce processing times have also been moved. Uh, I um, believe that the uh, Chief Executive of Social Security Scotland is due to appear before Parliament to go into further details um, on this. And uh, I have already discussed with him that I think it might be useful for him uh, to provide an update uh, to all members uh, uh, within the Scottish Parliament uh, to reassure them of the work that's been undertaken and also to ensure that we are open to suggestions about how this can be improved. Stephanie Callaghan. President officer, people who have experienced a delay when applying have understandable concerns about the prospect of losing out in payments whilst they're awaiting a decision to be made. And I have heard what the Cabinet Secretary said today, but just to be crystal clear, can she confirm that in cases where delays have been experienced, the Scottish Government will ensure that those eligible will be paid from the date on which they applied? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, uh, President Officer, I'm happy to give that reassurance once again that people um, will be backdated uh, in their payments to the date of application. Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on motion 9710 in the name of Emma Roddick on Illegal Migration Bill UK legislation. I'd be grateful if members who wish to speak in the debate were to press their request to speak buttons. I'll allow a moment for members to, to organise themselves. <laughs>